Hello and welcome to today's devotion. We are in Paul's letter to the Roman church, chapter 7. We are going to review a bit, chapter 7, verses 7 through 13, because he's um, Paul is writing to Jews and in this chapter in particular. And um, since none of us are, I'm guessing, and none of us have that history, it's hard to get understand the context to whom he's writing to. Um, we don't live under Jewish law, so we don't know what that's like. We don't have a temple that we go and, and, and offer sacrificial uh, offerings. Um, we don't have the Ten Commandments that's inside the temple. Um, we don't have a history that they have. So the context can easily get lost. But that being said, it's not like we can't dive into the, to the letter and, and gain some wisdom. This is what he's trying to say. Let's pray and get into the, to the letter, shall we? Lord, thank you for your word, speaking through your apostle Paul. And as we go into your word today, please, through your spirit, open up our hearts and minds to be able to understand a little closer, a little more deeper, the reality of who you are and your history as well as where we are in our relationship with you right here in the present, that we can trust you, that you are always there, that you are faithful, that you are enough, that you are sufficient, that you are the author of our salvation, that our greatest desire, our greatest love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Paul writes, starting verse 7 of chapter 7, what should I say then is, this, is the law sin? In other words, is the law that was given through Moses sin, since we're not underneath it, any, or under the law, under that era of the law? He says, absolutely not. On the contrary, I would not have known what sin, I would not so, I'm sorry, let me back up. Absolutely not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin if it were not for the law. And then we talked about this last devotion, that even the Ten Commandments, when you begin to um, look at them, you realize, man, I have a nature that's contrary to what the commandments say. In other words, when it says do not covet, I want to covet. When it says do not commit adultery, well, within our sexual nature, there is not a limitation to once we give ourselves over to pleasure. There, pleasure has no satiability to it. Pleasure is insatiable. Desire is insatiable. Um when you talk about lying, uh, lying in our life, if you go through life in this world, it's, it's overwhelming. And um, we learn very early on that um, lying helps us get through it. Lying becomes a, a very useful tool to get through life because it's too overwhelming not to lie. Now, that's not a good, necessarily a good thing. Um, I remember hearing a story. There was a, a young girl that was in Sunday school, and when asked about lying and what that meant, she said, well, lying is an affront to God and an ever-present help in time of trouble. And I went, yeah, that's how, we've, that's how we look at lying. But um, without the law saying do not lie, we would continue to incorporate that manner of life and not even realize that it was something that was not of God, that it was um, contrary to God. And so this is what Paul is saying by the law brings awareness to our nature. And then he says, once I was alive, this is verse nine, once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life again, and I died. The commandment that was meant for life resulted in death for me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it, killed me. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and just and good. Now what he's talking about when we look at verse 8, once I was alive apart from the law, what he's writing about here is once I was living and doing my life apart from the law, 
not realizing that I was in bondage to something that was in control of my nature, namely sin, not even realizing it, but I was just living my life in a manner that had complete unawareness to my true nature. However, when the commandment came, sin sprang to life again. So when the commandment comes, we realize, oh my goodness, we have a nature that's contrary to God and as such leads to death. God is the author of life. See, sin oftentimes, and from Genesis 3, presents itself as the way towards life, towards a way or a means to living fully. If you go back to Genesis 3 and look at the dialogue between the serpent and Eve, Eve says, well, we can't eat of any tree. We just can't eat of that tree. And that's when the serpent says, no, God gave you that commandment to keep you down. He is not good. He does not have your best interest in mind. He does not have your good in mind. He knows that if you eat of it, you will be like God. You will have unlimited reign. You will have unlimited wisdom. You will have unlimited experiences and excitement and thrills that you could never possibly imagine. This is the way to life, full life. Everyone wants to live fully. Everyone wants to have a good life. And so when the law comes in and says, okay, to be in relationship with God, remember this is uh, the 10 commandments is a relationship uh, contract agreement. I'll be your God. You will be my people. This is what I'm asking you to do in order for me to be your God. <laughs> Don't covet. And we realize, oh my gosh. I can't be in this relationship with God because my very nature is that that is jealous. I can't stop it. And this is what he's writing about when he says, sin took the opportunity and killed me through the law. It's, it's a growing awareness of the greater reality of who they are in relationship with God. That trust is the main, is the main uh, essential for a relationship with God. And if the trust is fully established, then and only then can the commandments be kept. But without trust, the commandments cannot be kept. And our nature is contrary to trusting in God, which is why now we live by the spirit, which is transforming our nature to trust in him. I have said recently, and I think it is true. It's not the tra a transformation um, that is pain free. It's a transformation that I described as being more like being forged. If you look at metal or anything, it's beaten and it's, it's, it's worked and it's heated and it's um, all the, all the, all the bad parts of, of the metal are, are brought to the surface, the dross, if you will, and removed uh, the impurities. But the impurities are removed by heating up the, the, the metal and the metal is beat. That's kind of how it feels at times when we're being transformed. Not all the time. Thank goodness, in God's mercy, we're not in that constant state. But that's how it can feel. And this is what Paul is writing about with regards to uh, these verses. However, as, we says in, as he says in verse 13, therefore did what is good become death to me? In other words, the law that brought awareness to my nature, did that become death? Absolutely not. On the contrary, in order to be recognized as sin was producing death in me. I'm sorry, I'm back up again. Absolutely not. On the contrary, sin, in order to be recognized as sin, was producing death in me through what is good, so that through the commandment, sin might become sinful beyond measure. The law brought an awareness to our nature and that our nature was in bondage to sin. That's what the law fully does, did. Uh, we're going to continue on next week. 
with verse 14. But uh, until then, know this, the Spirit of God that is within you is greater than your nature. And although uh, it can feel at times completely defeating and discouraging because of the nature that we carry with us in our bodies, in our minds, God is doing a good work in you, and He is faithful to complete it. You have a great day in the Lord, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.